the line anyway. Okay, we're going to get the St. Clair County Board of Commissioners meeting started. First, before we start, I have to apologize. I forgot my suit at home. I can honestly say it's 17 years. I've never sat up here with not, not having a suit. So it's the best I could do this evening. <laughs> um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Of the United States of America and to the campus for which it stands, one nation, liberty, justice for all. Roll call. Uh, Commissioner McCown. Here. Commissioner Baldwin. Here. Commissioner Bede. Here. Commissioner Dunn. Here. Commissioner Rushing. Here. Commissioner Vanden Here. Chairman Ball. Here. Uh, items three, additions, deletions, changes to the agendas. Two additions, A and B. Mr. Chair, can I make a motion to add the Michigan Convention Center COVID-19 grant relief program and the proclamation for National Work Nurses Week? Second. Uh, any discussion? We'll add these as items T and U to the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Approval of agenda. So moved. Support. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, proclamations. I think we have two proclamations. We will actually get those to the individuals at the later date, but I need a motion for both proclamations. I would make a motion that we approve the proclamation recognizing Matt Paulus for his years of service. Support. Uh, there is one more to out there. There was two proclamations. Two. Uh, it's for nurse, nurse. nurse this week. Yes. And so, okay. So just add that to a motion for both of them. Or do you have it? I have it. She's got the nurses week one if you want a separate one. Um, just do it in one motion. There's proclamations. Okay. You guys want to amend your motion? Yeah, I'd amend it. It includes both. Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Consent agendas, items A through J. Chairman, I move for the approval of item 7A from 7J and the consent agenda. Mm. You didn't approve the minutes of the previous meeting. No. You skipped me. That is both. Oh, I got you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, discussion. What happened, Georgia? Minutes of the previous meeting? No, we did that in A through. We said both of them. Got it? No. Okay. I, I did. I, I missed it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> did the approval agenda then? I, I don't think I, I don't know that we did the minutes. No, we approved both both proclamations. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we didn't do the minutes. But we didn't do both minutes. How about I just make a motion to approve the minutes? All right. Second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor. All right. Back to the consent agenda. A through J. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I would move to uh, approve item seven A through seven J on the consent agenda. Support. Uh, discussion on any of those items. None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, reports of standing special committees. I'm going to start with, uh, actually, David, I'll start with you. Can you hear me, David? <laughs> okay, let's move on to Greg. Um, I have none tonight. Georgia? Yep, I do have a couple. Uh, Carrie is going to go into uh, a couple of these in more detail. David, you have a really bad delay on that. Okay. Georgia? Okay. So. Carrie's going to go into a couple of these in more detail, but I did want to thank the Port Huron Rotary for recognizing 21 different department heads and coming to the last meeting, and for the EDA and the Health Department for their collaboration on the uh, vaccination clinic for employees within the City of Port Huron and an upcoming one in Fort Gratiot. 
Um, I think those both went really well from everything that I've heard, and I think it's important uh, for a lot of different reasons. Then I had gotten a call uh, from a resident. I know that we all occasionally get calls from people, and sometimes it's things that maybe you can help them with, and sometimes it's, you can't. Um, this particular one, though, led me down a path to reach out to Deb Johnson with Community Mental Health and um, maybe how to get someone some, some needed help. And she reminded me of the mobile crisis unit. So uh, at some point, I'd like for Deb or someone from Community Mental Health to come in and um, maybe discuss the different things because for as quickly as we were able to act, I think it probably made a really big impact for this particular person. Um, and I know I've heard of the um, mobile crisis unit and things like that, but until you're kind of faced with a situation where maybe it, it would apply, you might, might forget about it a little bit. So, um, but there's apps, there's a number, the mobile crisis unit, so 24 hours, seven days a week, and they can get to a person if that person is already maybe working with someone in community mental health, or maybe that would be a good place for them to start. Uh, but it was it was a good reminder that those those services are out there. Um, and then, sorry, I'm trying to go quick. Uh, but yeah, maybe if, at some point if Deb could come out. Um, another place to find all of those telephone numbers is sccmh.org, and uh, to get to all of their access lines. And then lastly, I was uh, appointed to the SEMCOG Regional Review Committee. Uh, and this is, it only meets maybe a couple of times a year, but it um, helps select projects funded by TAP, uh, special pro pro other special programs, and oversight of the Tobman uh, Fellowship Program. So I'm excited to get started on that. Lisa? Um, just from the health department, I'd like to make everyone aware of the free COVID clinic um, that's tomorrow at the Harvey Reinvestment Center. They're doing first doses that you have to be registered for from noon until 2. And then second doses, or you have to register or walk in, but they're doing it from 2 to 6 p.m. It's in collaboration with um, the Community Foundation of St. Clair County, so the first 200 people that go or show that they've been vaccinated can get a $5 um, voucher to make sure the food truck that's there. So whatever it takes to get you there, to get vaccinated, um, we just continue to encourage the community to get vaccinated. There's definitely a, a deficit and a, a long way for our community to go to get vaccinated. Okay. Uh, Duke. David. Um, we had a great meeting now, and I think we're going to talk about it later on. Okay, uh, just a uh, touch base too, and Nancy's here. To, so myself and Dave and Nancy actually met with the Marine City Chamber. As many of you know, they're working on the Marine City Marina project down there. Um, we talked to some of our um, local foundations that had um, had expressed an interest in helping participating and funding that. They had actually asked for a grant request to come before them. So Nancy is now our uh, um, quasi parking rec director, and uh, so she's going to be assisting the chamber on um, Laura Scotcha and helping them uh, write for that for um, uh, this this May um, grant series. So, um, yeah, that's it. And I'll, I'll be talking about 26 mile road corridor stuff before that. So, citizens wishing to address the board, Ms. Windsor, would you like to come up here and introduce yourself? Well, I know I know many of you, um, but I wanted again to uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm super excited to get a chance to work with St. Clair County, and I, I wanted to thank Jeff and Harry and the Commission for being open to this innovative partnership with Port Huron. I do think there's a lot that we can do together, and I'm super excited to make that happen. In the upcoming weeks, um, April, uh, Mark is still in charge, and he, I'm following him around like a little puppy dog, you know, seeing everything I can see, and uh, he's been super helpful. I just have to put a big hats off to him because for us that are in the field, these parks are beautiful, like the parks that we have in St. Clair County, these destination parks that he's built. His staff seems very passionate about parks, and when you go there, they're clean, they're they're, they're great, and they, one of my first goals is to just get that word out to as many people as possible because they don't know that we always realize how blessed we are to have 
the great parks we do in St. Clair County, not only with the county, but all the different um, government entities as well. So in the upcoming months, um, in May, he will be stepping back and letting me try to muddle my way through and be here to consult with me in May. And then in June, um, he will officially retire. And, and I've been working with him since I've been just a little person in recreation. And I just, again, wanted to wish him the best because he's done a really great job for St. Clair County and super appreciative of that so um, I'm, I'm looking forward to also just in the upcoming months getting like a baseline of what's going on in parks and then um, maybe getting a chance to talk to all the local government entities and see what things that we can do I know we met in Marine City today which was really good so if there's things that we can help with and just kind of understanding what's going on but I'm, I'm very excited and I appreciate the opportunity so thank you thank you Nancy and Nancy did go to the Harvard of the North Central Michigan. That's right. Full disclosure. <laughs> uh, no unfinished business to go before us. Uh, 11A, the 26 mile road corridor study. I guess we're going to tag team this a little bit with Dan Casey's here and Dave Struck this evening. I'll let Dan talk a little bit about. Um, now, well, we have. Hold this down for a sec, because I'm going to do some talking. So, we've obviously had lots of conversations about um, the large piece of parcels no longer available. There are, you know, there are a few different pieces out there, but when we start talking 100 acres plus water, sewer, so on and so forth, um, there's nowhere to even respond to respondents. And I think we've had to turn down four requests in the last month. Um, large, you know, large tracts of land, three billion, one billion, five hundred million, you know, this kind of stuff, you know, big stuff. And um, so. Obviously, I've talked to many of you about it. We had a meeting yesterday that Dan organized. What do we have, 40 people or so in that meeting? So it was everybody along the 26 mile road corridor. We had representation from Ira, China, um, um, Casco, um, and um, Cotterville. And then, and then the water and sewer people from Marine City, water and sewer people from so on. So, so we had a good mix of people in the room just to talk about 26 mile road. Dan had talked about the issues that, that he faces. And really the question was to ask the question, if we're willing to take this leap of faith and look at 26 mile road as the next major hub, um, do people want development? Because if the answer is no, we don't want it, then that's fine. You know, so, so be it. We'll move on and look to do some things somewhere else. And um, after the meeting, uh, everybody, it was, it, it, um, it went, I didn't say I was going to, I didn't know what I was going to expect coming out, you know, going in there and coming out of that meeting, it was better than anticipated. The meeting went very well. And I think that those um, different townships along there will want to proceed. We had actually asked the individual townships if they would like to us to come make a presentation to them to talk about why we're looking at 26 mile road. So we will be doing um, that piece of it. But I think there's some things that we can also simultaneously work on um, coming up. But I'm, I'll defer to you, Dan, here for just talk a little bit about 26, maybe why it makes sense. Yeah, so um, good evening, uh, commissioners. It's good to be back in front of you again. Uh, it's funny how these things can come about. Um, this discussion actually originated a couple of years ago when uh, we created a new Blue Meets Green priority project, which was to develop a large piece of property for the next big industrial park. Now. There were a lot of other projects to work on, so that wasn't at the top of the heap, so to speak. Um, and so we worked on accomplishing some other things. And on the side, we were working on that project, trying to identify land. But honestly, in the county, our biggest one of our biggest constraints is availability of water and sewer. We have land all over the place, but finding um, land that's situated close to water and sewer that's also close to um, interchanges, expressways, and so forth, that can be problematic. Um, and so it began with that discussion. And then fast forward a little bit, 
Um, we've been working on some pretty big projects in that corridor. Ira Township has been pretty aggressive and interested in growth. And so we've been working with them on some projects. And then at the other end of the corridor, at the east end um, in China Township by Marine City, there's a large greenhouse project we've spent um, more than a year working on. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to go there now, but we spent uh, more than a year looking for a site for that and eventually settled on some property that's right on the corner of King Road and Marine City Highway. And so that brought into play the question about what kind of infrastructure was there to support that development. And it was there, but it wasn't. And so a lot of conversations were started with community leaders in both of those communities, Marine City and there, and also later in Cotterville Township. And then one thing led to another. Um, then we had a discussion a few months ago with some property owners over by the airport who uh, largely, besides the airport itself, there were some industrial type users, Cordis Brothers, Iroquois Industries, some other people that wanted to tap into a water line. There happened to be one on Palms Road, but that's a mile and a half away from their property, right? So that conversation was out there. What can we do to get that extended? And then as we moved down the street more recently, uh, some uh, developers who own property at the corner of County Line Road and Marine City Highway on the Casco Township side came in and met with me and they wanted to know what kind of development would make sense for that corner. Their original plan was residential, uh, but they have a lot of wetlands to deal with. And they wanted to take advantage of um, how that corridor is gonna grow in the future. And they wanted to know my opinion of what was gonna happen there. They wanted to also feed off of some of the momentum that's growing on the Macomb County side of that border where you have the Beaumont facility under construction and you have another medical facility that's planned for construction across from the Meyer. And I know having worked with hospitals in the past that they very carefully choose the locations where they want to put these facilities and they don't put them in the suburbs usually and they don't put them in, in cities, right, or inner cities. They put them on the fringes where they expect development to happen and they do research, um, pretty intense research to figure out where those places are. So the fact that those two facilities are going there should tell you that they're anticipating that there will be commercial, some retail and, and most likely residential development occurring up and down that corridor, including in St. Clair County. And so looking at all of those various issues, it became pretty evident to us that that corridor is gonna be one of the next big corridors to develop in the county and it might take five or 10 years before it really gets going. But in the meantime, the question is what should we be doing as government um, agencies to prepare for it? Do we have master plans with zoning that actually makes sense for what's most likely to, to be developed first? Do we have plans to put in center turn lanes so that, cause that road's already getting bad with traffic, right? So do we have the ability to put in a center turn lane? Do we have the easements for it? Um, and do we have water and sewer capacity or the ability to expand it? And do we have communities that are interested in funding and supporting them? And so we began having that conversation with the communities yesterday. I was very encouraged by what I heard from all of the community leaders. In particular, and I'm not naming names or anything, but I've been a little concerned about Cotterville Township because when they put the water line down Palms Road, that was pretty controversial. And that was a project that EDA was involved in years ago. So um, I was a little bit concerned about what that would mean for them. But they stood up and said they have five of six of their elected officials are in favor of it. And um, so that gives us some great opportunities to develop a partnership with all of those communities to move forward. Now, we have some opportunities with, potentially with ARPA funding, which uh, I'm sure all of you will have some tough decisions to make in the future, but is that money potentially gonna be eligible to support some of this infrastructure growth? Uh, those are conversations that, you know, are beginning to happen at the early stages, but we need to learn more about um, what, what is eligible for those funds to be used for. What's the timing of that? When does the money have to be spent by? Um, one of the action items that came out of yesterday's meeting was um, a suggestion to do a road 
corridor study, which would involve Metro Planning, Dave and Jeff and their team, um, uh, potentially hiring a planning consultant to help with that. And the goal is to evaluate all of the zoning uses that currently exist today along the road corridor um, to look at where existing infrastructure is, what the capacity is of those systems today to handle potential growth, to look at the road itself, what kind of road improvements are needed, what might that cost to upgrade, what's the timing of that. And then probably the most important thing of all is what is the development potential for the road? In other words, when might it come and what will we expect to see? So if there's going to be some residential, well, how much residential is feasible in the next five to ten years? You need to know that as you're starting to look at sizing your water and sewer lines, right? How many taps are you going to need and so forth? Do you have enough capacity today? Can you make the investment five or ten years from now? Or should you be more proactive and begin making those changes today? So we're in the very early stages of having these conversations um, I think it's very important for the county to try to get out in front of this because if you don't, what happens is you're going to have a hodgepodge of uses uh, along that corridor in different places. They're not necessarily going to be compatible, especially when you have different communities that are involved. Um, they're not always on the same page in terms of how they want their corridors or their properties to be developed. So uh, I, I love the idea of doing this, this corridor study because that gets all the communities in the room. They're all kind of looking at the whole corridor instead of just the piece of it that they normally would have jurisdiction over. So that's kind of where we are with that. I'll, I'll take any questions that you might have. Dave, I don't know if you want to make any comments. Yeah, Dave, why don't you jump up there? Good evening, commissioners. So basically for all the reasons that Dan just mentioned, I mean, this is a prime uh, time and opportunity to go after a corridor study like this. I mean, this is a unique opportunity to basically establish a blueprint for this corridor. Um, you know, in light of all the infrastructure funding, the potential infrastructure funding that's coming down the pipe, you know, Dan mentioned the ARPA funds, but we're going to have, uh, you know, there's a potential reauthorization of the transportation bill right now that might get lumped into the uh, President Biden's Build Back Better plan. Um, so these are things that are currently in Washington. Um, these funds are going to be wide ranging for infrastructure. So we're talking roads, bridges, schools, broadband. You know, almost everything under the sun has been talked about in terms of infrastructure. Um, and Dan also mentions, you know, a hodgepodge of, of sort of planning right now. And if you look at the communities along the corridor right now, the master plans that are currently in place are, are, you know, many of them haven't been updated since the mid 2000s. So, you know, we have to ask ourselves, are we equipped right now as these funds come down the, the, the pipe? Are we equipped to respond in a proactive way instead of being reactive? You know, we know that these funds are going to be available potentially for uh, multi year uh, type deals. And we want to make sure that, you know, as those those different funding opportunities come up, that we've got a plan in place to to be proactive and go after those funds. And, you know, it's no secret that whenever we go after any sort of state or federal funding, if you can show that your projects are in a plan that's got wide scale buy in, uh, multiple communities are involved, those are always going to fare well, particularly in competitive grant uh, situations. So, um, you know, we do have a model for doing this back in 2001, 2002. We had a range road corridor study that was done involving five communities along Range Road. Um, and that looked at everything, you know, planning and zoning, land use. Um, that's the biggest key is kind of looking at what currently do these communities have in terms of future land use. And in this case, we need to really take into account what's going on in Lenox Township, Chesterfield Township. You know, we know Chesterfield Township just recently updated their master plan in 2020. They're calling for mixed uses across uh, right at the highway interchange there. Um, you know, like I said, some of our master plans are quite, they're quite old. And, and right now, we've got some inconsistencies in terms of what's planned for future land use. And as Dan said, I mean, when he's got the opportunity to potentially bring in a company and, you know, he's got to go and sit through, you know, a rezoning process, that's not something that bodes well for, you know, being amenable to development. So one of the things that this corridor study can do is look at those future land use issues, make sure that we've got consistency across the board. 
Um, in many cases, like in the Range Road Corridor example, the communities actually came up with a, a zoning overlay that kind of went across the entire uh, corridor. So across five communities, it was kind of uniform zoning for the, the project area. So that's something that could be borne out in this. Um, you know, certainly there's, there's a lot of other factors that could go into this. So, you know, water sewer capacity, um, transportation improvements, streetscape, um, signage, access management issues. You know, so, you know, our recommendation would be to essentially get the project partners together, um, basically define a scope of work in terms of what it is we want to get out of this thing, um, you know, coordinating capital improvements, future planning, and developing an RFP to go after a planning consultant that could sort of, uh, you know, manage this process and develop the overall plan. Um, so that's really the kind of what the quarter study would entail in a nutshell. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that or if you commissioned so any questions. I have talked to, here's my suggestion, Dan Casey, Dave Strzok, Kurt Weston, Bill Hazelton, Steve Kason is actually the planner for IRA, Casco, and China. Steve is the retired economic development director, planning director for Macomb County. I've known him a long time. You guys know him. Very sharp guy. Happy to see that he was sitting in that room get together and I've talked to everybody and you know they're fine with um, putting this little thing together too. really to come up with an RFP there's no reason we can't get an RFP put together that we can't go out and solicit bids for um, you know for this because we still have some homework to do to go talk to the other community so on and so forth so we can at least get an idea of what we're looking at what we're talking about costs you know those types of things but if we're going to commit and look at 26 mile road, we are absolutely, this is going to be the first thing that needs to be done, you know, before we even move just to get, like you said, consistency in zoning and that, I mean, if, um, as I said before, if this is gonna be a heavy lift and these small communities do not have the ability to write the checks to do that at all. They, they don't, they barely get any money off development on top of it, you know, 0.75, maybe one tops, right? So um, I would suggest that would be the first step, just get you guys together and get something together. Same time we can do the uh, rubber chicken circuit per se and go talk to everybody. Um, we're going to East China on Monday to present to them. Um, East China has some potential with water and sewer to be able to maybe you know intertwine some of the systems. For example, we had met with uh, East China previous to talk about St. Clair because St. Clair's capacity is maxed out in their system. If they want to expand, you know, north, we could take actually some of the sewer from St. Clair, put it into the East China system. I, I got to give other communities credit. They're, everyone's really playing very well together. 15 years ago, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't even have got that meeting together. <laughs> it would have been a waste of time, right? But everybody sees the same thing and i think everybody understands with we we have water coming out of our eyeballs no pun intended. i mean we have water you know these plants are running at 25 percent type of capacity we can we can get water down 26 mile road no problem the sewer is going to be that's the uh, that's the difficult one yeah um so start looking at this thing and it's going to be uh this is long-term planning uh, I did pose the question uh, at the, you know, at the end of the day, and I would pose this question even to the commissioners. If not 26 mile road, if I'm missing something here, let me know. Should we be looking, you know, somewhere else with all the factors that Dan has to deal with, you know, with large pieces, this, 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 you know, I'll go back to my magna plant, 544,000 year new taxes, even after all the abatements and all the stuff, that's phase one. So. These are big ticket home run items if you can land them. And um, so, and, and nobody and nobody in the room said, no, this is, you know, 26 you shouldn't be looking at. I think everybody agrees that that's the next, you know, hub. So if you guys are cool with it, I would like that little four group to get together, go get some uh, requests for proposals, uh, bring it back to us going to take you some time you know and it's going to take us some time to do what we got to do too so we really know what we're talking about you know so you guys think that makes sense or am i on my rocker yes and yes <laughs> all right you got your marching orders <laughs> thank you gentlemen thanks guys
uh, Jeff Donaldson. I had asked Jeff to come in to um, talk about some potential use of some HUD funds at the county's head for quite some time. They've done a few projects in the past with us with these funds. There's an opportunity that we have a project that may be able to use these funds on a short-term loan type of situation. Uh, money's been sitting there. I don't even know when the last time it's been out on the street. You can share that with the commissioners and stuff, but let you talk about this, Jeff. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for uh, inviting me up here. Um, and yeah, I think you touched upon some of the points. The Planning Commission, Metropolitan Planning Commission, has approximately $405,000 in housing and urban development program income funds. We've, um, they date back to the early 80s, uh, to the best of our recollection and records. Um, they've been recycled several times through the decades, uh, mostly for um, various housing, type, housing programs, um, a homeowner rehab type of situations, whatnot, small, small loan situations, that sort of thing. Um, so there's been different ways we've leveraged these these funds throughout the years to uh, bring you know leverage private investment as well. So recently, we were asked to uh, look into an opportunity and put these funds out there uh, through, as uh, Commissioner Bum just mentioned, uh, a low interest short term loan program that could support a range of housing needs that have been identified and proposed down in the city of St. Clair. Um, as you know, and as we talked about just with the other project uh, my colleagues were just talking about, Magna International is uh, building in the St. Clair Industrial Park. Um, the job creation down there is expected to create uh, some demand in housing and various housing needs. Um, planning staff has been in discussions with the Detroit HUD field office about the funds that we have, and we verified that a loan program targeting these kind of very different, different kinds of housing needs would be absolutely an appropriate use of the funds. Uh, some of the priorities that we would take into account if we were to, uh, as, a, well, as we're looking to uh, put together a loan program initiated with these funds, would include ensuring funds are extended to any sort of private entity or developer would to uh, facilitate the housing needs would be secured with a primary position or be well collateralized. Um, we'd also uh, make sure we structure any such loan programs so the funds are repaid in short period of time to ensure that if there are other uh, available needs arises, we could access those funds again sometime in the short term, near, uh, near future. So we're working currently with Corporation Council to put together, because this would be a customized loan program. It's These dollars have been uh, their program income, because uh, we've put them out there on the street and gotten them back enough times, uh, we're sort of the master, our masters of our own destiny with these funds. Um, so there's not a structure in terms of how to set together, uh, put together a loan program, but it's like I, like I mentioned, uh, the HUD field office said, go for it as long as you, uh, you know, reasonably meet the national objectives of a HUD and definitely going after various housing needs would, would do that. So um, we're working with Corporation Council to put together the talking points of how a loan program would look, how it would look, uh, making sure that, of course, we're secure with these funds, um, we've got a good position on them, and also uh, um, that they can come back to us in, what I would say, relatively short order, so that as other needs arise, we can be responsive with them again. Okay. Any questions for Jeff at all? So this money would just be used, say, to build a, a, a low-income home? And then when the house sells, the money would come back? Uh, not necessarily home. We're looking at a specific project right now that they had requested, the larger, the, it's a conversion project down there that would help put some money into the project, um, meets all the housing goals, but two, three years kind of stuff. We're not putting this out 10 years, you know. I mean, right now yeah. it's sitting there. We haven't used the money. And uh, I think the last time we used them, uh, would have been about eight years ago. Yeah, so it's not like these things are in there. They're in a CD right and now. And they can't be used in the city CD of Port interest. Aaron because the city of Port Aaron has their own CBG funding and stuff. So you take Port Aaron out of the equation, then you have to meet these other HUD requirements. You know, a $300,000 home is not a HUD requirement, right? Generally conversions of older buildings, um, meeting income thresholds, you know, I mean, there's sure. different things that we're looking at. We do have one project um, that meets the blue meets green criteria too. You know, I so often, if these types of monies come available, I go to the blue meets green list to say, is there any way that these monies can be helped to achieve something on that list, right? 
and this would be a total repayment. This isn't a you know freebie handed over. It's a great idea. Yeah, so. especially when it's just sitting there not being utilized. Yeah, make better than our point. 0.5% or whatever we're getting on the money. And I should add, while they're, they have not, they're not being currently utilized, in the past what's triggered uh, utilization of them has been various uh, programs that have come down the pike from the national or the state level from a, from a housing perspective. And we've used those funds to, to leverage other funds coming down those from those programs. Um, we just haven't seen anything like that in the last few years that we're, like we've done in the past. So that's why they have not been put out there on the street again. Yeah. And some of these, in the specific project that we're looking at is a much more larger, I would call it impactful type of project than maybe a house in a neighborhood that you did a, you know, $20,000, you know, fix me up on it. We're talking a project that's already going to have, I won't say tens of millions, but it's going to definitely have millions invested in it. So it's just another little, Another little kicker, I guess. So, um, so get with Gary, you yeah. know, figure that out, and then I'm sure he'll be coming back to us at a later date. I just want to let you know that they are available, and if it's something we should really be looking at to participate in some of these projects, if it, you know, checks our criteria. And... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, item C, approval of county disbursements. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the March 2021 county disbursements in the amount of $20,025,791.43. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on any of these? Roll call. Commissioner McConnell. Yes. Commissioner Beaton. Yes. Commissioner Rushy. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Vanabash. Yes. Commissioner Dunn. Yes. Commissioner Baldwin. Yes. Chairman Baldwin. Yes. Item D, the resolution of the equalization report. Uh, if you guys have any questions on this at all, I got Justin in attendance uh, tonight on anything that you may be specific. It's pretty standard stuff. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 21-05, approving the 2001 Sinclair County equalization report. Support. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Item E, the library request. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the library request to close the main branch at 4 p.m. on July 21st, 2021, and to close all branches on October 11th, 2021 for staff training and development. Support. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. opposed. Aye. Item F, 2021 Homeland Security Grant Program. I would make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2021 Operation Stone Garden grant application for emergency management in the amount of 285,000. Support, Baldwin. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contract approval request. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, approve the contract arrangement attorney agreement for the public defender's office with Teresa Novosel for a one-year term the amount of $25,000. Support. Uh, discussion. Roll call. Commissioner Dunn. Yes. Commissioner Van Yes. Commissioner Beaton. Yes. Commissioner McConnell. Yes. Commissioner Ball. Yes. Commissioner Rushing. Yes. Chairman Ball. Yes. I am H, the 2020 Drain Commissioner's annual report. I make a motion to approve the 2020 Drain Commissioner's annual report. Second. Uh, discussion on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The Goodles Historic Buildings Cedar Shingles Replacement. Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the contract with Reasonable Contracting Services Incorporated for the removal and replacement of the roofing of the historic village schoolhouse and farmhouse at Goodles County Park in an amount not to exceed $46,121.57. Support? I would just echo, I think, what Nancy said earlier. We met, and I think the first comment you made to me, Nancy, was you've been going on all the tours of the facilities, and she was like, Man, you guys got some really nice stuff. <laughs> and if you look around, we got some really nice stuff and it's well maintained, well kept up, you know. Um, you know, with the support of the millage, obviously that that is. And we've got we built first class stuff. So uh, uh, roll call. Fisher Vanderbilt. Yes. Fisher McConnell. Yes. Fisher Rush. 
Yes. Commissioner Baldwin. Yes. Commissioner Dunn. Yes. Commissioner Beaton. Yes. Chairman Baldwin. Yes. Uh, item J, the fleet repair and maintenance RFP results and agreements. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the fleet repair and maintenance agreement with Mobile One Loop Express in the amount not to exceed 25000 Marysville Tire and Auto in the amount not to exceed 175000 and Fleet Services Inc. in the amount not to exceed 500000 for each, each a term of 521 through 430. Support? Discussion. Uh, roll call. Mr. Baldwin. Yes. Mr. Rush. Yes. Mr. Vandenbach. Yes. Mr. McConnell. Yes. Mr. Beaton. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Chairman Baldwin. Yes. Item K, the Manning Table Request Reclassification Proposal for Registered Deeds. I would make a motion to approve the request to reclassify a Clerk 2 position to a Clerk 3 in the Register of Deeds Manning Table. Support. Discussion. Can we throw a pay cut in there for Jay? Amen. Story of my life. Staff volunteer already. All in favor? Aye. 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 opposed? Community Mental Health Board. This time I'd like to make a motion to appoint Cynthia Cutright District 2 to the Community Mental Health Board for a three year term expiring 331 of 2024. Support? Uh, discussion. No, I actually talked to um, Deb Johnson shortly after she met with Cynthia, and she felt like Cynthia was going to be a great fit. She's really excited to welcome her to her board. So good. Uh, Cynthia is heavily involved in the port. She's the DDA director for Port Huron, and she sits on the Port Huron Museum board. Yep. So, yeah. 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 She's, she's great. So I'm excited to have her there too. Good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. The library system digital magazines. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the addition of digital magazine content to the Overdrive Inc. agreement in the amount of $10,000 annually. Support. Uh, discussion. Roll call. Mr. Beedman. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Mr. Vandenbosch. Yes. Mr. Rush. Yes. Mr. Ball. Yes. Mr. McCow. Yes. Chairman Ball. Yes. Uh, item N, Resolution 21-6. I would make a motion to adopt Resolution 21-06, authorizing Carrie Hefting, Administrator Controller, and in her absence, David Strzok, Deputy Administrator, is authorized signatories of the County of St. Clair, Michigan. Report. Um, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Policy 312, hiring policy. Ms. Hefting. Um, these next policies you see before you are most of the verbiage comes from our existing employee handbook. Um, as you know from the policies you've been seeing over the past several months, we are transitioning away from having an employee handbook and putting everything in its own separate policy. So um, these include a little bit of cleanup language, but no substantive changes over what's in our existing handbook. Um, you will be seeing probably another batch of them coming to you next month as well. We have about 15 to 20 more policies to get through, and then we'll have our handbook transitioned out into our policy format. I can answer any specific questions you might have on any of these policies, though. Anybody? No, well, actually, we need a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to forward May regular board meeting with a recommendation to approve policy 312 recruitment and hiring policy. Board. Any discussion. Can we roll them in the world? Uh, yeah, we'll do that virtually. There's not that many. All in favor? Uh, uh, policy 332. This time I'd like to make a motion to forward to the May regular board meeting the recommendation to approve policy 322 employment practices. 322. Oh, Gary, I've got a different, is it 332 on my other sheet? I have 322. Um, I believe it's 332. I will amend my motion to say 332. 
Gary, uh, anything you want to talk about that at all? Uh, no, it, it's the same on, on all of these. It's just um, the majority of it's our existing handbook yeah. language okay. with a little cleanup. If there's a difference, could we get a, just a notation saying that we're changing X to, right? I mean, when, as we look at them. In the, um, for the next ones that are coming through. So typically we do show track changes. Let me just pull up my copy here to see what came through on the agenda. Uh, I see it on 312. In red. Yes. In red. Just, just the changes are noted. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. If you don't see any changes, then it should be the existing language. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Thank you. Item Q, policy 341. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to forward the May regular board meeting to the recommendation to approve policy 341, discipline and discharge. Second. Got anything on that one, Carrie? No. Okay. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Policy 342, salary and wages policy. At this time, I make a motion to forward to the May regular board meeting the recommendation to approve policy 342, salary and wages policy. Support. Anything? Um, this is just making the language consistent with what's in union contracts. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Policy 346 timekeeping. Ironically, I'm always late, so it's funny that I'm this one. <laughs> We'd like to make a motion to forward to the May regular board meeting the recommendation to approve policy 346 timekeeping. So forward. Instead of being late, we'll be slow. <laughs> so we can put, if you're not in there 15 minutes early, we're going to dock your pay. Or you want do we have, <laughs> we have a motion to support? Yep. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item T, which is the Michigan Convention Center COVID Relief Grant Program application. Chairman, I would move to approve the Michigan Convention Center COVID-19 Relief Grant Program application in the amount of $555,377 from the Blue Water Convention Center. Support. Uh, discussion. Is this so? Is that the one that the threshold was changed? Well, it's kind of funky because on the application, there was there actually in the legislation, there was no threshold. When it hit the MEDC application on their application, they put a threshold. We're working with Dan Lauer's office, actually, Ron Cook and, and actually Great Top, and those guys are all over this thing trying to get the thing tweaked for clarification. Um, we're like, if you go per the numbers on the application, we're $10,000, but we're the only one that would be depending on how you look at it, exclude it from it. We're the only one that meets criteria. So the state of Michigan put 10 million bucks, give or take 8 million, 10 million aside. It's Cobo Hall, Saginaw, Muskegon, one more. And then we would be actually, we may check all the boxes. So um, carry it up. <laughs> So, um, in talking with strategic communications, we are applying for this funding because we are hearing of convention centers already starting to get awarded this, and we do know that all awards are made by May 1st. So, while for the application it doesn't appear we qualify, for the legislation for this funding there was no population threshold. So, we are submitting our application, and I'm working with legislators to see if we can get some clarification to be eligible for this funding to help offset some of our losses um, for the convention center not operating this past year. That's all right, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Item B, um, uh, proclamation. Actually, we should have done that. Yeah, we took that. Yeah, you did that, yep, so. Uh, administrator's report. Um, as Commissioner Baldwin mentioned, at our department heads meeting, uh, Port Huron Rotary came in and they did an acts of gratitude presentation. Uh, Keeley Baraboo had approached me about two weeks prior to our department head meeting asking if we wanted to participate. So what they did is they wanted to honor 20 or 21 employees that um, have been working throughout the pandemic, um, frontline employees that you know don't typically receive recognition, so reached out, worked with some department heads to select those employees, and it was a 
Very nice presentation. Those employees all did receive a $25 gift card to local restaurants from Rotary. It was actually um, really nice reaching out to the department heads and hearing the stories of, you know, this employee always came in early and did extra cleaning. Um, this is the person that made sure that the office was running. Just the stories of everybody going above and beyond. Unfortunately, we, we could only pick 21 employees. Um, that was the difficult part is narrowing it down because everybody has really been fantastic throughout this. So um, Commissioner Baldwin did attend that department head meeting on the board's behalf and it, it was a great presentation, very well received. Our MIDC Indigent Defense Compliance Plan is due um, in two weeks. As part of that, they have implemented standard five that we have to comply with beginning October 1 and that is um, for our indigent defense complete separation from the judiciary. As you know, we do have a public defender's office and the courts were still maintaining um, parts of it for the roster attorneys. In some cases, they were still appointing attorneys to different cases and we've been slowly transitioning 100% of that to the public defender's office. So we're pretty confident it'll be a smooth transition for that standard five, but you will see that compliance plan um, come before you next month, the application for your approval. Earlier today, um, the community services coordinating body called um, a special meeting to discuss vaccinations in the county. Um, Dr. Mercantant was there, Dan Casey was there just to discuss some of the efforts to reach out to communities, employers to um, increase our vaccinations. Um, our clinics have been going very well, but we're getting to the point where our mass vaccine clinics were not filling our appointments, so we're offering walk-ins. So we're looking at ways of doing a decentralized model to get out more into the different communities. Um, companies want to host vaccine clinics, they can work with us on that. We do ask for a minimum number of participation. Certainly we don't want to mobilize if we're only going to be doing two people. So similar to what happened for City of Port Huron employees, you know, several gathering together. So what they're asking is just everybody to spread the word, encourage people to still go on the health department site to pre-register. Um, if you go on the system and pre-register, you'll probably be offered an appointment within a week. So we have availability right now. We have the vaccines. So we're just really trying to reach people that might not know it's there. Um, we're hearing anecdotally that there's people that still want the vaccine and we have it available. So we need to make that connection so they know it is available. I think spreading the word that how quick they process you because I went and got mine last Friday. Last Friday, and when I got to Alexander's, Mary <laughs> line was like, "Oh my God!" You know, it was one of those like, "Ugh." <laughs> so I could see where people would get discouraged. So I got in the line. It was literally around the building, and man, it flew. You know, by the time I got in, had to wait my 15 minutes. Thank God my last name's B. If it was T or S, the line was a little bit longer. But um, 30 minutes. That was after waiting my 15 minutes. They had tables. Man, it flowed very well. I actually te texted that. But then I had a friend of mine that was scheduled at noon. He called me. Oh, man, this line's around. A, you know, and I said, no, trust me, it goes quick. You know, I did that th same thing this morning. He got in line. So I think, if anything, to talk to people about how quick they actually do get you through those things. That was my experience because I could see where you would pull up and you're like, uh, you, know, I'll, you know, boy, this is eight hours waiting to, you know, happen stuff. And uh, so. Um, Myosha in the state did extend their remote work rules for another six months. So we will continue operating under our current model with um, employees rotating in staff and working remotely. But as part of that, um, we had initially heard that the state of Michigan employees for on the other side of the building would not be returning to at least July, but that was prior to this extension. So at this point, we're not sure when we'll see um, the state of Michigan staff return in our building, but if we hear any news, we'll keep you updated. Our auditors are in right now. The audit has begun. We are hopeful that everything will be able to be done and completed on time this year. I know last year we had a few delays and we did file for an extension for our audit, but right now everything looks like it should be completed on time. 
And as part of that, on your consent agenda, um, there was the notification that we did receive the Government Finance Officers Award for our 2019 CAFR. So we are very happy about that, especially um, with the year we had last year in the audit and being short staffed. So definitely kudos to Dina for that. That's a, a lot of work to get that to put together. And um, next month, we will be coming to you with our first round of budget adjustments, uh, mostly grant and standard stuff. We're not really looking at doing any COVID-related budget adjustments yet until we get more information on the funding, where we need to deposit it, and how that has to be accounted for. I was on a call earlier today, um, actually two different calls, one with NACO and one with MAC regarding the funds and it appears that the guidance on these funds or some official guidance um, everyone's saying should be out towards the beginning of May so we should have something official here coming down pretty soon and as soon as I get that I will share that with you and that's all I have this evening uh, motion and receive file minister support so moved support all in favor Aye. Aye. Uh, miscellaneous business. If anybody wants to go on the tour of the old Art Van building, Larry Jones is going to open that up here at 7 o'clock. So if any of you guys uh, want to go check it out, uh, I'm going to pop in there and take a peek. Last time we were in there, they were going to town on that thing, so you're more than welcome to stick your head in there. I think he's going to open these side doors over here, I told him. Um, receive and file. Motion to receive and file packets that were sent to commissioners, packets at their places. And any other information presented? Or all in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjournment. So moved. Or all in favor? All right. All right. All right.